You know, they say the truth is stranger than fiction. That definitely applies here. So we've all seen the movies and TV shows dedicated to this topic that sometimes seems far-fetched. I mean, Prison Break? Come on. When they ended up in the jail that was run by the inmates, I just, I gave up on the show at that point. But surprisingly, most of what you've seen in entertainment was most likely less bizarre and more probable than the actual methods that these convicts used to escape. So get ready to hear about some escapes that would make Houdini jealous, because here are are the 10 craziest prison escapes of all time. Number one is the dental floss escape. Vincenzo Curzio was a convicted murderer and a member of the Sicilian Mafia that was about to face prosecution. On March 17, 2000, he escaped from his cell in Turin, Italy by sawing through the bars using only a piece of dental floss. Being built in 1970, the prison was designed to handle outside attacks rather than escape, so just with dental floss and some patience, he was able to slowly cut through the cheap metal. After escaping his cell, Curzio went old school by tying some bed sheets together and climbed out a window down to freedom. It's like Rapunzel, just a lot more evil. Number two is the Master Crafter's Escape. On January 3rd, 1995, three inmates escaped from Britain's Parkhurst prison using tools that they built within the institution's walls. In the prison's sheet metal shop, the trio managed to not only build a ladder long enough to scale the fences, but also managed to fashion a working gun and a master key. The master key itself, however, was the most impressive, as reports claim that the inmates crafted it from memory after seeing the officer's key. After hiding it in the prison gym until nobody was around, they simply walked out the back door, cut a hole in the inner fence, and then scaled the outer wall with the ladder. The plan was foolproof, except that upon escaping, they discovered that they were on an island and had nowhere to go. A for effort though, guys. <laughs> You're screwed, but A for effort. Number three is Mother Trucker's Escape. On April 11th of 1998, Jay Sigler, in his eighth year of the 20-year sentence he was serving at the Everglades Correctional Institution in Florida, was in the courtyard waiting for visitors to arrive. And arrive they did. They arrived in the form of a Mack truck smashing through four prison fences before its occupants then opened fire with shotguns against the facility's security team. Another car followed closely behind the truck, driven by his own mother, Sandra. Well, this just gets weirder. After jumping in his mom's car and switching cars twice to throw off his pursuers, the entire crew actually got away for a bit. That is until they were recognized from the news, which resulted in a car chase and a subsequent car crash after which they were all arrested. Oh, and not long after, Sandra Sigler testified against her son to reduce her sentence. That is a confused mother. Mother of the Year Award, <laughs> no. Number four is the Great Escape. Stalag Luft III was a German prisoner of war camp that held enemy Air Force servicemen during World War II and was deemed inescapable. That was until British inmate Roger Bushwell hashed an escape plan with over 600 other prisoners. This one was elaborate. After digging three separate tunnels, each nine meters deep to avoid setting off the seismograph microphones along the fences, they finally launched the plan and on March 24th, 1944, the great escape began. Out of 200 men, only 76 actually made it, and all but three were recaptured. In fact, Roger Bushwell and 49 other escapees were then executed on orders from Adolf Hitler himself. Sayonara, buttholes! Oh, you see that? Hitler learned some Japanese. Hitler's so smart. Number five is the helicopter escape. Just after barely starting his 30-year sentence, convict Pascal Payet made a daring plan to escape from Lunez prison in France. On October 12, 2001, a friend hijacked a helicopter and landed it in the prison courtyard where Payet simply hopped on and flew away. And unbelievably, he got away. Unfortunately, he tested his luck by actually returning just two years later to break out three other inmates and all of them were recaptured. However, if that wasn't crazy enough for you, in an unbelievable twist in 2007, four masked men hijacked yet another helicopter and once again Payat was broken out of prison. And of course, he was once again recaptured just shortly after this time locked away in a secret location with no contact to the outside world. Some people just don't learn their lesson. You got away, bruh. Just 
should have just flew. Flew like a bird. Number six is the Texan 7 escape. On December 13th, 2000, seven prisoners escaped from the John B. Connolly unit, a maximum security prison in Texas. They managed to overpower and restrain 16 people, including officers, civilian maintenance workers, and inmates not in on their plan. Dressed as civilians, three of the prisoners subdued unsuspecting guards, while the remaining four made phone calls to the guard towers to distract them from watching the gates. Stealing a white prison van and easily opening the rear gate, the Texan 7 made their daring escape. But as we've learned, people like to test their luck and just two weeks after, the seven men robbed a sporting goods store, killing a police officer, which got them national attention on America's Most Wanted, after which they were quickly apprehended in an RV in a park in Colorado. I'm not advocating crime, you know, or anything like that, but if you actually did a crime, got in jail, and then escaped, you would be lucky to live the rest of your life with a wig, shaving your legs, just pretending to be, you know, I'd, I would be Matilda. Instead of Matt, I'd be Matilda, keep my mouth shut, and don't rob anything, it's just, it's stupid. Number seven is the Italian escape. Antonio Ferreira, an Italian-born explosives expert and bank robber, was serving an eight-year sentence in France's Friends' jail. On March 12th, 2003, six men in police uniforms pulled up in three fake cruisers and opened fire on the prison gates with AK-47s and rocket-powered grenade launchers. It's like real-life GoldenEye 007. Ferreira used a stick of dynamite a guard had slipped him to blow open his cell door and ran through the now destroyed gates to the chaos outside. Ferreira escaped in the police cars using fires that the attackers had previously set as distractions for emergency responders. An incredible scene any Jack Bauer fan would have been proud of Except that just four months later, an undercover sting brought down every member of the attack. See, nobody's got like an after game plan. They have a game plan and then it's like, I'm free! Now I'm caught again. Okay, I'm going. That's right. That's right. Number eight is the death camp escape. On October 14th, 1943, a group of prisoners killed 11 German officers inside a Nazi prisoner camp under the cover of night. Restraining the inner guards and emptying the camp's armory, the group planned to take out all of the officers and escape with all 600 prisoners. Talk about a lofty goal. Unfortunately, the remaining German officers found the bodies of the fallen Nazis and opened fire on the loose prisoners who had to make a run for the woods. Nearly 300 people did escape. The rest being claimed by gunfire or the minefield. Well, this was a valiant effort and it would be more upsetting to know that those people died, but we all know how World War II ended, so yeah, the good guys won. Number nine is Frank Abagnale, prison inspector. Sentenced to 12 years for multiple forgeries, Frank Abagnale Jr. was being transferred from the Federal Detention Center in Atlanta, Georgia to await trial when he became aware that the U.S. Marshal escorting him had actually forgotten the detention commitment papers. Knowing that this was highly irregular, the con man used this slip up to convince the guards that he was an undercover inspector investigating the facility for the FBI. Unbelievably, the guards actually let Frank walk right out the front door to meet with an agent, aka his criminal friend, with whom he sped off into the night. Hang on, is this one really an escape if they let you go? That's a philosophical question. And number 10 is Alcatraz. On June 11th, 1962, three prisoners, Clarence Anglin, John Anglin, and Frank Morris escaped the world's most famous inescapable prison, Alcatraz. After using dummies of themselves to convince the guards that they were still in their beds, they crawled out of tunnels in their cells that they had been digging for a year with only spoons. After sneaking up an unused service corridor, they climbed up a ventilation shaft to the roof and then scaled a fence to reach the island's edge. Finally, they chartered across the icy Pacific waters to freedom using a raft that they had made out of raincoats and contact cement. However, no evidence of them either successfully reaching the shore or drowning exists, making it a hot topic of debate for decades. And those were the 10 most insane prison escapes of all time. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching this episode. Thank you so much. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know what you want the topic of the next top 10 to be. Remember to click that red subscribe button to be notified of future videos on my channel. On the right, you'll find an annotation to my last video 
video, as well as an annotation to my second channel where I make daily vlogs and much more. There's also an annotation to my merch store if you're feeling like picking up a cool shirt or maybe just a wristband, whatever you want. And of course, for all of you on your mobile device, all of the links I just mentioned will be in the description below. Thank you guys one final time for watching and look forward to the next episode. It's going to be a doozy. Peace. Ah.